this video, I'll show you what purposive sampling is. I'll go over the different types and some of the advantages and disadvantages. A purposive sample is based on your knowledge about the study and population. Participants are chosen based on the purpose of the sample. The alternate name is deliberate sampling, which indicates you're choosing according to the needs of your study. Applicants who don't meet the profile are rejected. For example, you may be conducting a study on why high school students choose community college. Your first question might be, are you planning to attend college? People who answer no would be excluded from your study. Here's a few of the different types of purposive sampling. With critical case sampling, you're collecting cases that are likely to give you the most information about the phenomenon you're studying. With expert sampling, you're going to include only those people with expertise in a certain area. The technique of extreme case sampling focuses on people with unique or special characteristics. Homogenous sampling is collecting a very specific set of participants. For example, age 20 to 24, college educated and female. On the other hand, maximum variation sampling is collecting a wide range of people with different viewpoints to study a certain phenomenon. This is especially useful for uncovering common themes. With total population sampling, you're going to study an entire population who share common characteristics. For example, you might study all violin players. Typical case sampling allows you to develop a profile about what is normal or average for a particular phenomenon. Each subtype of purposive sampling has their own advantages and disadvantages. In general, one major advantage of this type of sampling is that it's easier to make generalizations about your sample compared to, say, a random sample where not all participants have the characteristic you are studying. This type of sampling tends to be more cost and time effective than many other sampling methods. It does have a few disadvantages. Purposive sampling is sometimes called a judgmental sample. That's a bit of a misnomer because there's no intended bias in purposive sampling. However, due to a lack of random sampling, purposive sampling is sometimes open to selection bias and error. Even if you try to eliminate selection bias to the best of your ability, it can be very difficult to defend your choices for participants. Readers of your study may doubt if the sample was representative. If you found the video useful, please take a moment to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.